Our buddy here, Julian DJG, has given us a little uh, situation he's got here. Uh, you let the video play. Uh, you might be able to see it. But the um, C drive, just like he was saying there, I don't know if you could hear it, but the uh, C drive, it shows up in his computer list when he goes to the Ultimate Boot CD. Um, it doesn't show any file size as far as capacity anything like that and it gave him a little message here saying it basically can't access it so the computer sees his hard drive it sees that there's kind of a partition there but it's unreadable so what you got is a corrupt file system uh, most likely could be due to either um, some damage to the drive or just the file system itself has just gotten jacked up um, either way he needs to get his stuff off of it so there's a couple of things you can do here um, one we're going to try something free first because free is always better uh, at least to try and that would be to go through and get a copy of Ubuntu uh, you can download it for free um, what you want to do is go to their website, Ubuntu.com, uh, download the CD image, which is going to be a live disk. And then once you get that downloaded, just like you did with the Ultimate Boot CD, um, make it, you know, it's an ISO image you're downloading, burn it to a CD and go ahead and uh, start your computer up off of that and see if you can see that C drives file system all those files there uh, if you can great hook up an external USB drive copy all your stuff over and everything's great if that doesn't work um, now you want to start looking at something that you should buy because um, when you have a file system that corrupted uh, you don't want to really fool around too much with it because the more you kind of start your computer up and down the more it's gonna piss it off uh, so there's a utility that I use uh, for folks I have the uh, business edition version of it which lets me do a little bit more stuff but you can go through and buy the basic copy of R Studio. and what you can do with this is basically pull your hard drive out hook up to another computer you have R Studio on and if it can see the hard drive it's usually about 90% of the time it can get a hold of the file system and let you pull stuff off with it. Um, I'll make a separate video on using R Studio because um, I have it on a different computer altogether. But R Studio would be what you want to use. And it's 80 bucks, but trust me, that thing is worth its price, you know, a hundred times over easily. Uh, it's probably one of the best recovery pieces of software I've seen. There's other ones like Stellar Phoenix which cost more and they're, they're horrible. They don't really work as good. Um, they don't update as much and whatnot. But RStudio is great. Um, you can basically get the free demo of it. The demo is limited to recovering files less than 64 kilobytes. So you can at least get the demo and say yeah I can see my files uh, with RStudio before you buy it. So look at it that way so I'm gonna go through and make a little quick video here of how to use our studio for you because something tells me you're probably gonna to have to use that um, but if you're lucky Ubuntu will work and I'll uh, actually I do believe have a video already for that yes uh, look up the video is it a good idea to recover files with Linux and I'll uh, also post that as a um, video response to your video for you so and put the link in the description on that nonsense but um, that's all you can really do for that man unfortunately um, when your file system gets that corrupt you pretty much got to do that um, now once you do get your files off you can try something like uh, check disk and that can go through and repair your partition but you don't want to do that before you get your files off because if check disk fails your files are trashed even more um, and RStudio might even have trouble getting the files off I've seen that happen 
But if your file system is just up and done that, chances are R Studio is going to do a good chance of it. You might even have a pretty good chance of getting something with Ubuntu to work. Um, but get your files all first, then try doing a um, check disk on that. I've got a video on that as well, how to use check disk. Let me give you a quick rundown of how R Studio works for you. I'll do a separate better vid for this, but the way this one computer is, I can't really hook any audio up to it. It's designed really just for data recovery. But um, once you go through, you open up uh, R Studio. You uh, get a listing of your drives here. Uh, everything that's in your system, I'll see your USB drives, uh, media card readers, things like that. And pretty much what you want to do once you get into R Studio is you can just click on a drive and it should show you, you know, your start in size. If you see some crazy size of like two terabytes, it usually means that your file system is really, really jacked up. And if you see that, you basically need to right click on it on the drive and do a scan. Now what I like to do is if I've got to do a scan, it's not to click on the uh, drive letter there, but to actually click on the entire drive itself and then do scan. Because that's going to look for any extra partitions. It's going to try and figure out where the partitions start and end, their true start and end points. Uh, at the end of that scan, uh, it's going to give you a breakdown of everything it's found and you're going to see different sections listed under here that it found, you know. Uh, I might say that it's found uh, partition C, um, that found documents that start in point, yada, yada, yada. You want to go through all of those and pull your files off because the actual file you're looking for could be in any one of those. Um, but one of the first things I'll try sometimes is just to see, can I just open the drive files up? So I right click on the partition, I hit open drive files, it does this little scanning thing where it's going through verifying your file entries, your folders, all that stuff, and it shows you everything there. Of course this is a fully working drive, um, so it's going to run through a lot faster than yours probably will. But I uh, give you an idea of the interface at least. Uh, it's going to show you each one of your folders, all that stuff. When you see a folder with an X on it like that, or a file with an X on it, it means that it's seen that the uh, folder or file has been deleted, and you can recover it. Um, or at least attempt to, I should say. See how that file here has an X on it? It's a temporary file that was created uh, by uh, a configuration program. But you can... Uh, basically click on files with these red X's on them and it'll try to go through and recover them. Um, I could try, I should probably make a different video for that, but basically um, when you delete a file from your system you're not really fully deleting it, you're just marking it as deleted uh, or able to be written over and then eventually another program can come over and write in that same space, so that's why I'm telling you you might be able to recover that file if it's got a red X on it um, because you see it in the file structure here but part of that file may have data from another file written on top of it already. Um, if you just deleted it like five minutes ago and you're doing this then yeah you have a pretty good chance of doing it but like a month ago don't count on it. Uh, yeah pretty much everything for your user account is going to be under documents and settings so you can just hit checkbox on the whole folder and it you know cascades down and then up at the top you have a recover marked you just hit that and of course you want to recover to another hard drive you don't want to ever recover to the same drive you're pulling stuff from so you just browse um, to another drive I got a little Z drive I use here you select it you hit OK and then you uh, want to choose an option here that's restore from root. You do not want recover security. Sometimes that's checked by default in some of the new versions. Um, you do want recover alternate data streams. Remove the hidden attributes just because it's freaking annoying. And 
uncheck the option to skip files with bad sectors because chances are your files are going to have bad sectors in them and you want it to just go ahead and try anyway under advanced here you have um, if the file already exists you know the prompt you I like to tell it just add file ID to the file name and for broken file names rename all invalid characters to an underscore I don't like the dollar sign because it's a special character in Windows so that's it you just hit OK and it should run on through